Okay, YouTubers, it's gonna about to genuinely go down. I'm gonna tear down a version one stockish e Revo version one. I'm gonna tear down my 2.0 e Revo version two. You can obviously tell it's a version two because of the oversized axles and carriers, not to mention the Kush Drive transmission. And the e Revo stock 2.0 here, as you can see, is still the stock, stockish center plastic axles, stock plastic axles in front and rear as well, with RPM arms all the way around. Shocks, shocks. For those of you who don't know, I already have a version 1 chassis over here that has the version 2 um, bulkheads modified to fit already and a version 1 or version 2 chassis with the original version 1 bulkheads and A-arms. Here's the motor 2 of E2. I went with my old version 1 motor. Sorry, kind of doing a little bit of speed thing. I ended up just removing the tires and the little axle nuts for it for now. I'm going to go on to doing the same. Or actually, no. I'm going to go on to removing the carriers and the A-arms and the bulkheads from it with the rear wing side uh, body mount in the front body mount. My personal preference, I always remove the center screw that's underneath the shocks to remove the front bumper, and I always remove the front shocks from this side because a Kershaw design chassis is a nightmare with these uh, these screws right here that mount on the shocks because it goes through with little washers that hold to the back of the bulkhead. Then by mo removing the front rocker arms out of the way, it accesses the four screws. I'm going to slightly back off these just a little bit so it keeps little plastic washer spacers that hold the bulkheads in place. That will be a nightmare on assembly. But since this is basically a disassembly and a side-by-side -side comparison, it's not going to be that bad. Plus, i got plans for this thing. Okay, now with just removing the screw for the servo, you should be able to remove the bulkhead. Push drive transmission, the new diff with new bulkhead, all in one. As you can see, it's definitely in 2.0. Now, almost the same with the rear diff, but this time I'm actually going to take the brace off with the two screws down here first, being over here, and then remove the entire brace, then access the four screws that are down below, and do the same thing with the shocks as well. Sorry about my camera angle. Now with pulling the shocks out of the way and the, out of the front mount and pulling the A-arms, or not the A-arms, the rockers off of the posts to get them out of the way, you remove these three screws and then the rear body mount. The diff, our bulkhead should drop. This should slide off. Bulkhead technically should slide out as well with the axle attached. As you can see, it's a 2.0 bulkhead. Set that up and out of the way as well. Here's the front part of the frame. This is what I modified to fit the new front bulkhead from the 2.0. And this is how I modified the rear part for the rear 2.0 bulk. And what I was talking about the little plastic spacer washer things before were these that the Kershaw uses in the front and the rear to fit the 2.0. To remove the transmission and everything else out of the Kershaw chassis. Be basically the same on a normal V1 or V2 chassis, but the screws space it. Now the only thing that's I'm gonna leave on there right now that's 2.0 is these front shocks, which actually I technically can't remove now. Just 
to the new 2.0 shocks, which a lot of the guys have a big gripe about this, just because technically they have the stainless steel non-coated titanium shaft inside of them. So they don't have the titanium. We're on a V1, kind of like this one over here. As you can see, it's kind of a goldish looking shaft. It's got what they call the tin, which is like a titanium coating to smooth and strengthen the shafts, which is kind of the downfalls. But Traxxas itself probably was cutting corners to make this thing more cheaper and more readily available to answer um, the other good 110 um, bashers that are out there. Here's my uh, receiver. All I was using was the one for the servo with a glitch buster that I had there. Um, for those of you that didn't know, with the VXL6, um, it has all the sensors already in it, but since I was using this motor, which I'm not going to use anymore, because one too many bashes kind of frayed the wires a little bit. I mean, I could fix that up, but and I'm really content on it but the actual motor that comes with it the actual 2.0 Erevo is this one here which actually has this little case thing on it um, it'll actually give you the RPMs and uh, the GPS out of the VXL and the voltage of your ESC and um, what is it the temperature of your ESC as well which is definitely a new cool feature that I guess just came up to date on the new Traxxas ID um, software system that you can use with any Android or iPad that hooks up Bluetooth to the, the radio as you see over there um, which is kind of a cool feature that they didn't have before but it's new they kind of did it for the X Max guys and since the VXL6 is the original ESC that was in an uh, X Max, there's a lot of saying that it basically is the old ones that they bought back. And one of the guys in the E Revo group just made me aware that there's a little underneath here, there's a little clip where you could sit there and uh, put in lights and extra fans if you wanted so. You can actually pull this tab out. Hold on one second, I'll pull it out with some pliers. Okay, never mind that notion. You actually got to unscrew the entire ESC to get that plate off because it's sitting underneath the fan shroud and everything. But just to give you an idea, this is kind of like a saga almost that's been modified to fit the new Kush drive because the screws are roughly offset fairly here or there. The one part that goes around, which here's the actual mount on the 2.0 versus the one version one this hole's a little bit smaller on the 2.0 this is kind of offset and i believe it's this screw is farly offset kind of about where the ridge of this is okay here's the inside after i remove that shroud you can see the four pins or two rows of four pins with different heights and another cool feature, they actually put a small like car, um, automobile, 10 amp fuse on the other side. Which in all honesty, any U2.0 owners, I would take that shroud out and do something about these posts. I'd put some grease or something to keep this thing a little bit more waterproof. Because I think part of the reason why lots of people are probably burning these things out is because it's getting wet because i mean just look how dirty mine is mine has been in and out of water as much as it has been but i mean it doesn't take much to get con to those contacts to really get wet water is going to be able to pool down in there and everything else so i definitely do something about maybe covering that up or even if you can put a little bit of electrical um a liquid electrical tape on it to cover those things up before you put it together and maybe cover up the ends of this so those contacts don't connect either. And I know I'm technically ruining time, but just to prove that this is a 2.0 chassis that I was speaking of here earlier, people in the eRevo groups on Facebook already know that this, I guarantee you, is a 2.0 chassis. 
as you can see here that it had the I had to cut the holes and notches it doesn't have the additional space for the braces in the rear off to the side back by the battery tray over here it doesn't have the additional spacing for the rear brace on the 2.0 whatsoever this is what I had to do to cut the slits actually fit the new diffs I made little templates to kind of get an idea what I was doing as you can see I traced it with a sharpie I smoothed all this out ground all the other little pieces and parts out of it same with the other side Then here you got the regular version 2 chassis as you can see it's got these additional screw holes right here and right here that the V2 has it still has the brace from it um, here's the original V1 shocks that I still have sitting on these A arms as you can see once again with these that they technically have a goldish uh, titanium coating or whatever the tin coating but I ended up fitting this on a version 1 Revo um, arms and bulkheads which nobody genuinely would ever really want to do considering these new bulkheads are way more heavy duty now I'm going to get over here and tear apart this stockish V1 E Revo Exact same situation. I removed the two screws for the shocks. I removed the one screw to take the front bumper off with the front body post. Then I'll remove the sh shocks from the post here and over there. And then I'll remove the four screws that are hidden underneath. Okay, here it is with the shocks removed. I put the screws always back on the post. Now I gotta remove these four screws. Now I turn it around and once again I gotta remove the servo arm from the bell crank. As you can see it's still V1 stuff. As you can see it's still a V1 chassis like I was talking about before. That's the part that I basically ground all the way down and then cut the slit on the one side. Give you a side by side comparison in a moment. Here it is, here's the version one that I modified I basically ground off that entire hump and then cut that slit on that side for the hump on the bulkhead as you can see this is a V1 front bulkhead with diff stock diff because it's a stockish e Revo. I believe this does have the HR spiral cut in it but everything else is stock lasted for a good amount of time don't really have no issues with it but doing this tear down for the video now here's uh, the rear, I'm going to do the same thing, remove the parts for the lower part of the shocks. I'm going to remove the, po uh, the rockers from the post and then the three screws that you see there. Okay, now with the three screws removed and the rockers removed from the post, take the back off, set that aside. Take the rear bulkhead apart. As you can see, it's a version one bulkhead with a version one uh, spiral, I believe, still inside the case. Original transmission from a version one. Um, I don't believe this does have the center drive. It's been a while since I've torn this one apart. Even then, I technically one of them pulls where I already have a backup transmission of motor plate and everything else. It does have the center drive already inside of it. And now that I'm at the point where I'm removing the transmission, to remove the spur gear, you remove the three screws that aren't sunken in for a recess. The ones that aren't higher up, like the ones that go up by the tracks, as, as you see there. Here's the cush drive with that, um, with that one part completely removed front clip part and then there's this rubber part that you remove with the plastic washer that goes over the top of it the rubber part then there's a little triangle in there that a pin holds in place 
that kind of holds the pin in place as well. And then you can slide the whole thing forward and then it just leaves the shaft. Now here's the 2.0 cush drive transmission removed from the motor plate entirely. Now it's time to dissect this thing. I'm going to change the bearings out while I'm inside this thing just because I can and I already have the bearings and, and at the same time I want to see what the new cush drive looks like inside. Okay here it is. Alright so far from what I can tell it's already got steel gears inside of it. None of the plastic like the V1 did. Uh, the center drive, meaning center diff, that's in the E-Revo 2.0. Hold on one second. Okay, completely removed. This thing is all steel. And I mean, this thing's pretty freaking heavy. It's about the weight of the entire old transmission. I ain't gonna lie. I'm impressed. Same with all these gears. Give you an idea. I'm gonna re-grease it anyhow. Not a big fan of how Traxxas greases their stuff, but yeah, all this is all steel, which I'm rather impressed. But yeah, all those bearings are going to be black seals by the time I'm done. I'm going to swap that out real quick, put this thing back together. Yeah, I might as well throw this in there too, just to give you an idea. I was trying to spin this thing by hand. By throwing a wrench through the hole and turn it and this thing is just ridiculous to turn I mean I've never even had a diff or a center diff that I couldn't ever turn that easily or that hard so I mean they definitely got some rather heavy weight oil and this thing's just heavy duty all the way around and there it is guys and girls these are all the bearings that are that are in the Revo 2.0 cush drive transmission to begin with. These three here are all the same. This one's a little bit bigger. It's kind of like the version 1 on bearing or outside bearing for a wheel. These are kind of like the inside wheel bearing of an E-Revo. But as you can see all these bearings now are black seals. Back. Sorry, I didn't want to contaminate the other space. So I had to change it up a little bit. Now I'm going to have to put the cush drive back in there. I'm going to put a little bit of lube in there. Like most of you guys are aware that I don't use any regular lube. I use my Mobile One lube, the synthetic wheel bearing chassis suspension universal joint grease by Mobile One. Okay, like I also said before, here's a little bit of the lube that I put in there. I just lube up the gears very slightly. To give you an idea, here's a version 1 E-Revo transmission. It apparently does not have the diff, or the center drive diff. Like I thought it did. Alright, there's this brace that's in the middle of this one. It isn't on the new 2.0 transmission, which appears to be about the same without that brace on the version 2 push drive. Don't lose that bearing. But I mean, that center gear does appear to be about the same between the two. And the top part, obviously, from a side a side comparison for where the spur is, is definitely not going to be anywhere near the same. But as for that gear ratio, it probably is the same. This part right here, this little gear, is probably about the same. I'm going to take them out and do a side-by-side -side with them. Okay, here's a true side-by-side -side comparison. From what I can tell, I think these silver parts... These silver parts are the same between the two of them. It's just the shaft that goes between it. This is the part where the spur gear goes on on the new cush drive. As for these two gears, as far as I can tell in every way, shape, or form, they're the same. 
I imagine they probably did keep the gear ratio the same in the 2.0 versus the 1.0. Oh. Okay, with the V1 front bulkhead and assembly and everything in my hand, I'm going to remove all the screws and take the skid plate out of the way. Now, I also already removed the front rockers with the shocks from the V1 and the aluminum aftermarket uh, Traxxas um, tow links. Okay, now with the tow links completely removed, I'm going to remove the pins to remove the lower A-arms, which are RPM. So that's all I use is RPMs. Okay, now with that completely removed, I'm going to remove these uh, turnbuckle links or toe links from the bell crank, whichever one it is. I believe these are the turnbuckles, though. Now with those removed, i got to remove this plate that covers up the turnbuckle that these will, um, the bell crank will run into as a stop. Now i remove the front plate that holds the bulkheads together and then the pins as well that hold the upper A arms together. Now with that completely disassembled and the pins pulled out and set off to the side with the little horseshoe things that hold the A arms in place for stability I'm going to remove the axles from the diff. Okay now with all that disassembled and the diff sitting here in the A-arms and the bulkheads all sitting over on this side I'm going to go on to the other part I'm going to slide all this off to the side over here move this back and then I'm going to disassemble that one as well now with the rear I'm going to do basically the same thing I'm going to completely disassemble this one I'm going to remove the rear skid plate and take the bulkhead and the A-arms and everything else off. Alright, now with the skid plate removed and the pins being removed, I can remove the lower ends of the true track. If you're using an E-Revo version 1 and aren't using RPM and true track in the rear that's RPM, I don't know what you're thinking. And for all you that don't know, you can't split this diff unless you remove that screw that goes to the center of the rear bulkhead on the rear okay there you got it there's the rear bulkhead torn apart a arms um, is all gonna stay on this side of my basement and I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna tear the rears apart on the 2.0 and the front bulkhead and rear bulkhead okay now here over at the 2.0 front I'm going to remove the same skid plates. Well, they're not the same, but remove the skid plates, same as I did with the other Revo, one version one. Okay, now with the skid plates removed, i got to remove the pins. On this one, to remove the lower A arms of the front. Okay, now with those pins removed, I removed the upper pins as well. Sorry, I didn't explain that. And now I'm going to remove that same little brace that the pins rest on, that the bell crank runs into. Unlike the original Revo, the bulkhead will come out like this with the diff. Um, I've already done a tutorial with tearing apart the diff. I'm not tearing the diff apart again. Uh, these cups, extended cups or whatever, are 8 millimeter shafts on it on the outside of the axles, or I mean the diff. So, in all honesty, it definitely is going to carry over from the two. The only thing I know they'd probably work on is the little adapter that people use for the low C swap. For the output drive that goes through the center, which is 8mm of an inlet. So that's the only thing I know of that could probably fit over this to maybe modify MIP. But right now, currently, MIP will not work on the carrier side. Because these carriers here... With this whole inside with this new carrier bearing, that inside part of the dog bone is just way oversized. MIP still working on it. 
And now since I got all this tore apart and kind of spread out, give you an idea, I'm going to come over here to the Revo uh, version 1 side. I'm going to grab, where is it? I'm going to grab, that's the rear, so I'm going to grab the front with their arms. The original uh, shock arms. And do a side by side comparison. Our toe links and compared to the original E Revo, uh, they're about the same size as the aluminum aftermarkets from the original E Revo, but they are the same length. So, and by the way, these are the. These are the 102s. Kind of hard to see here. Well, they're the 102 millimeters. There we go. 102 millimeter tracks. This one's the P1, P2, and LT. Alright, now I'm going to grab the bell crank and the turnbuckles from the V1. And bring them over to the Erevo 2.0. And in all honesty, other than the size comparison of the plastic arm, they're about the same. Yeah, they're the same length. I'll give you an idea. A little bit better side by side comparison. They are the same length, obviously the bell crank is the exact same thing, bearing and all. So other than the ends being a lot bigger on the new 2.0, that center steel shaft is definitely a lot, uh, a lot shorter, but I bet the threads go all the way into the neck of these plastic ends, which you guys are still finding a way to break. But these carriers are definitely a crap ton bigger than the original E Revo. Give you an idea. Actually, I don't think the carriers are really that much more different. They're the same in size. Give you an idea. Same in size. And as the inlet, the inlet's the true difference because this one has that little bit of a recess, and this one's not going to have no recess because of the bearing. So it's basically bored out a little bit more. But I almost thought they were the different size, but it's just that inner bearing that's de technically a lot different as for the outside bearing it's also going to be a lot more different because if you see here come on camera if you see here there's a nut that's in the center of these hubs which you can see in one of my other videos that this uh inside part here that the little set scrub screw is going to go inside of it's definitely um, bigger in size so that outer bearing is going to be bigger as well. Oh, I also went and grabbed this from the 1.0 which is this one because it doesn't have still have the screw in it but um they're the same size as well it's just that this one doesn't have the little opening for that one I believe the long travel might have been a little bit different on the 1V Maybe a little bit more clearance for a little bit more wheel turning on that one. And then as for these pins. Pins are the exact same size. Now as for the rear bulkhead, you can tell it's the rear bulkhead on the 2.0. This has got that funny little triangular thing that goes over that bulkhead brace. It's right there. Not to mention the skid plate's totally different by far. 
Well, unfortunately, this is going to conclude this video because I stripped out the head of that screw because I ended up going in there sideways like a butthead. But just to give you an idea, here's the... Over here, we got the Erivo rear with the true trick. Give you an idea in the turnbuckle size, just like before. You could probably go with the aftermarket turnbuckles, which I know they make that are aluminum, but the plastic ends are basically going to be the same. It's just that depth of that plastic part, but they're exact same length in every way, shape, or form. So a lot, a lot more stuff is going to carry over. It's basically just that the rear bulks, the front bulks with the new diffs. The center line, uh, guys are using the MIP center shafts for the center line in the Erivo group. Um, this is pretty much going to conclude my video. All the little comparisons between the Erivo 2.0 and the 1.0. Sorry this video is so long. Sorry I couldn't get a little bit more in detail and waste more time and maybe even chop it up into two videos. But after all my experience of tearing these things apart numerous times now, the 2.0 probably about three or four times completely. Actually two or three times per YouTube video from before. So complete teardowns in my 2.0. I've probably done every bit of like 10 times now. As for the 1.0, we you don't even want to get me started on how much I've technically torn that thing apart. There's my Monster E Revo version 1 with the 2028 castle on it of 1 5th scale power plant. Underneath there is my XLX ESC. Yeah, it's all covered up so I don't get it all wet because it's not waterproof. But coming soon as I'm going to put that thing on this E Revo 2.0 driveline really soon. Sometime maybe tomorrow or sometime during the week. So stay tuned or whatever. I'm going to have the very first E-Revo 2.0. Probably with a 5th scale power plant on it. And then maybe sometime in the near future I'm going to get the 2-4S um, LiPo batteries to have the very first 8S E-Revo 2.0 on a Kershaw design chassis with the Cush drive and all the axles and new center diffs. It's definitely going to be a true monster. It's going to be the answer to a lot of questions for people here. And in the E-Revo group, I'm going to do another custom mount just like that one. It might take me a week or so to get it to convert over. Considering that mount is totally different than the other one, I kind of keep changing my motor mount layout. Now that I got the 2.0, in the cush drive and everything I'll make one specific for that one 